Alright, g'day, IB Psychologist, and welcome to another video tutorial. In this one, we're going to look at some paper 3 tips. We're going to focus on question 1A, uh, and we're going to look specifically if the research uh, stimulus in paper 3 uses an experiment. I was explaining this to my class the other day, and I came up with this little tip, so, uh, so I just thought I'd make this video and share it with you all here. So, just a quick recap. Paper 3, you have one hour, five questions. Remember, this is uh, higher level students only, so if you're standard level, you don't need to worry about this. You're going to have a stimulus paper that looks like this. Okay, if I can find my mouse somewhere. And you've got the five questions down here. These three are always the same. This will be one of the two possible ethics questions, and this is one of the three possible evaluation questions. Uh, discussion questions. Alright, so we're, today we're going to look at just question one, the methods, and we're going to look at question one uh, A, the research method. Identify the research method used and outline two characteristics. So the tips in this video are looking how to make sure we get the three full marks for this first question if uh, an experiment is used. Alright, so Tips used if the, the research method used in the stimulus is an experiment and it might be a true, quasi, natural or field experiment. These are the four types of experiments that you need to know about in order to prepare for paper three. Um, okay, so question 1A, you have to identify the research, research method used. Okay, so that would be if it's an experiment, okay, it'll be one of these four. All right, so you'd get one mark just by um, stating the correct experiment again if, a re if it was an experiment used in the paper three. It could be an observation, interview, um, correlational study, case study. Okay, so again, we're just focusing on if it's an experiment and how to answer that type of question. So you have to give also give outline two characteristics. So to get the full three marks, you have to um, get the research method right and have two characteristics of the method, right? One for the, the correct statement of the research method and two for the characteristics, so three in total. So, two characteristics. Now, if it's, a, if it's an experiment, here's my tip. The first characteristic is the fact that it's it has an IV and a DV, okay? So you can, your answer, your first sentence for this question could be, right, um, a, you know, the research method used was a true experiment. A true experiment is a type of experiment, so it measures the effects of an IV and a DV. Or if it was a field experiment, you could say, um, the research method used was a field experiment. A field experiment is a type of experiment, so it measures the effects of an IV on a DV. This characteristic, all of these four have in common. So if you, you really need to know that an experiment, the definition of an experiment is that it has an independent variable and it measures the effects on a dependent variable. Okay, so that can be the same for all four uh, experiment types, right? That's the big tip. And then the second characteristic is just each of these have a defining characteristic, right? Something that separates them from, from each other. And so that would be the second feature that you would explain. Okay, so remember, so just, yeah, reminder. All experiments measure the effects of an IV on a DV. And then if it was a true experiment, you could say, um, you know, uh, Random allocation, this was true experiment, so random allocation is possible, we extrain, uh, control for extraneous variables, and we establish causal relationships. There's your two characteristics. Or, if it was a quasi-experiment, you would say, um, a quasi-experiment measures the effects of IV and DV, but not all conditions of a true experiment can be met. For example, we can't randomly allocate people to a condition. Or if it was a natural experiment, you would say, it has an IV and a DV, but it also, they say the independent variable is naturally occurring, and this is a natural experiment. Or if it's a field, has an IV and a DV, but the independent variables are manipulated and measured in a naturalistic setting. So that's how you answer question 1A. If it is an experiment, and it's one of these four types of experiments, that's how you get the full three marks. Okay, now just um, a, a quick distinction here. So true experiments uh, are controlled, okay, um, and we can, we, we can control all the extraneous variables or as much as possible. Quasi, um, we, uh, we attempt to, or actually quasi natural and field, we attempt to control for the extraneous variables, but it's not always possible. It's not always possible because we're in a real life environment, because the independent variable occurs naturally, um, or, you know, because we can't randomly allocate. Okay, so now, question I get asked a lot, we'll just cover this quickly, but I'll make a separate video about it. Quasi or natural, what is the difference? And here's my answer, it doesn't matter for paper three. All right, I know there's a lot of people out there who are research method um, gung-ho gurus who are gonna get furious at me for saying that. But why doesn't it matter? Well, here's the thing. Natural is a naturally occurring independent variable. Okay, so if it's a naturally occurring independent variable, I can't randomly allocate who's in the which condition because the conditions have already occurred because they were naturally occurring. They were there when I got there. 
Now, Kwanzaa experiment was saying random allocation is not possible, but the only way random allocation is not possible that I can think of, if someone knows a way, a different way, please put it in the comments and, and um, educate me on this, but the only way random allocation, is, random allocation is not possible is if I wasn't the one that created the conditions, ergo, the conditions are naturally occurring. So, by definition, they're the same. Any study that could be defined as natural can be defined as quasi and vice versa. So don't get too hung up on is it quasi, is it natural. My tip is if um, explain how the study meets the definition of the type of experiment. Okay, and let me give you an example. Okay, let's say we had um, we were comparing uh, a treatment for depression. All right, now I'm looking at uh, one doctor in Chicago is using blue pills, one in New York is using yellow pills, and I want to test to see which one's more effective to treat depression. Right, blue or yellow pills, and so this is my independent variable. These two conditions. Now I could identify this as a natural experiment, and I could say. This is a natural experiment because the independent variable of the different type of drug treatment is naturally occurring. But I could also define it as a quasi-experiment. And I could say this is a quasi-experiment because it has independent variable and it's measuring the effects on a dependent variable. But we can't, uh, not, sorry, but not all the characteristics of a true experiment can be met. So, for example, I can't randomly allocate who's in which condition because, you know, these conditions are, are pre-existing. And so it's just that simple change in the language of how we would explain the study to match the definition of, or the type of method that we're using. So for paper three, don't get too hung up on is it quasi or is it natural? And the, 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 the blurry boundaries between true, quasi and natural is also why in paper one and two I encourage students to just focus on true experiments because they're the easiest to distinguish and you won't make any mistakes getting, them, uh, getting those wrong. Okay, now just a quick um, question, another common question. Do you need to use details from the stimulus in your answer? So, for example, if you're explaining it's a true experiment, do you need to, you, you know, do you have to have evidence from the study? It shouldn't matter. According to the IB, uh, it, it shouldn't matter. You don't actually have to use the, uh, the details from the stimulus. But if you want to be safe, you can, and it would only add... A sentence or two so it just depends right now why I say it shouldn't matter according to the IB um, when I did workshop leader training this was one of the marked papers that we got and this is a specimen marks and so uh, we can see here they got a, one mark for stating the study and then the two marks for the characteristics and if you read this you'll see there's no mention of the stimulus material and even here in the markers comments there's there's nothing about how they applied this to the stimulus. They've literally just memorized the definitions of a semi-structured interview and pasted it and they got three full marks. So according to this, you don't need to use details from the stimulus. But this may change when the exams uh, when the exams happen. It shouldn't, but it might. So if you want to be safe, it doesn't hurt just to put one detail from the stimulus uh, into your answer. All right. Now, will the research method be stated in the stimulus? This is another really common uh, question. And Unfortunately, the answer is we don't know. We don't. I can't tell you for sure. It's not written down whether or not we, it will be or it won't be. So you kind of have to prepare like it won't be. Okay. So um, now I would say with experiments, if it's a true or a field experiment, these are pretty easy to identify, uh, and so they may not be stated in the stimulus because we'd expect you to be able to identify that. Okay, there's an IV and a DV here, and it's in a naturalistic setting, therefore it's field. Or there's an IV and a DV here, and, and it's clearly that they've created the conditions and they can randomly allocate, so it's true. So I think there's a greater chance that these two wouldn't be stated. I think there's less of a chance, if they go with a quasi or a natural, I think they would state the method in the stimulus. I think they should state the method in the stimulus because there's so much overlap between the two. And I think it would be a little bit unfair, and it would be very difficult to mark since it's such a blurry boundary between those two. So, will the research method be stated in the stimulus? Maybe, maybe not. I'm sorry, I can't give you a proper answer. I would say the safe thing to do would be prepare like it's not, um, but expect it to be. And so, what, why I mean, what I mean when I say that is, you know, really read and look for the statement of the method. Right, so this was the stimulus they gave us, and they did give the research method in the stimulus material, the semi-structured interview. And so, first of all, read very carefully to find if they state the research method in the stimulus and use that method. And if they don't, then you're going to have to identify it for yourself. All right, so just to recap, my top tips. Question 1A should be five sentences max, and use bullet points if you want to use bullet points. When writing, if the stimulus material uses an experiment, state the, state the method, 
state that it's an IV has an effect on a DV, regardless of what type of experiment it was, not what type of study, right? Interviews, observations, case studies, correlational studies, these do not have IVs and DVs. We're talking only about experiments. I can't make that point clear enough. Okay, state the IV and DV from the stimulus study, and then the unique characteristic of whatever type of experiment it was. Um, I will get, make other videos about the other types of research methods for paper three, but here we're looking at just how to simplify it when preparing for um, uh, experiments. And again, one sentence detail from the stimulus material would be fine, and just to match the definition. So for example, uh, you could say if it was a field experiment, you know, you would just highlight what was the naturalistic environment in the experiment that they use in the stimulus. And again, that's one sentence, you're applying it just to be safe. Now, um, another tip, you can, uh, yeah, and I mentioned this earlier, revise true experiments for papers one and two, I, I think. Um, true experiments and correlational studies are the only two research methods that I get my students to prepare for paper one and two. They're also the only two research methods uh, that I've included in this book. And the reason for that is it cuts down on the content that you have to learn, but you're also going to develop a deeper understanding of those two really common, really important research methods um, because there's a lot of possible questions. So um, keep it simple for paper one and two. Right. Um, as usual, I hope that was helpful. We've got a, a blog, a bunch of studies coming out. Sorry, um, blog posts, information to help you there. Um, if you like the video, you know, hit like, subscribe, all that jazz. Um, we've got Facebook groups with students and teachers if you're interested. Everything in, is in the description if you want to find more help. The revision guide I just showed you has come out. The link is there. And yeah, that's paper three if you're uh, preparing to write about experiments. Um, I hope that was helpful. All right. Good luck.